In Chapter 5, this problem might give you a little bit of trouble, so I thought I'd make this tutorial to go through it. So let's see here. We have a computer that can be classified as either cutting edge or ancient. 89% of computers are classified as ancient. Now remember, when you do this problem, it'll be slightly different, but bear with me here. So it asks us, for Part A, what is the probability that two randomly selected computers are ancient? Well, that shouldn't be difficult to find. I mean, one thing to note about this is that you're assuming that, well, one, or one computer, one random computer is ancient, has no bearing on whether the next random computer is ancient. So, in other words, that the events are independent. So the probability the first one's ancient and the second one's ancient means you can just multiply the probability of the first one times the probability of the second one. All right, so let's do that. So we want, so I better go back to the problem. I want the probability that the first one is ancient times the probability, if I could spell, second is ancient. That would be equal to 0 0.89 times 0 0.89. In other words, it's 0 0.89 to the 2 power. Right? Same thing, caret 2. The caret button is above your sh your 6 buttons. You have to hit shift 6. All right. So 0 0.7921. So let me type that, 0 0.7921. Awesome. Next, part B. What is the probability that seven randomly selected computers are ancient? Okay, this is seven of them now. So if we want right, seven random computers to be ancient, assuming, of course, that one computer has no bearing on the other, right? In other words, we're assuming independence still. That would be 0 0.89 to the seven, which is 0 0.4423 for my problem. All right, the last one. What is the probability that at least one of seven randomly selected computers is cutting edge? Did you catch that? So we have at least one is cutting edge. Let's go write that down. Okay, so I need the probability that at least one is cutting edge. Okay, well, let's think. How many could be cutting edge? We could have zero of them being cutting edge, one, two, three, all the way up to seven, right? When they want at least one, that means they want the probability that one is cutting edge, two is cutting edge, three is cutting edge, and so on, all added up. Well, that's a lot of probabilities to find, like a lot. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to add up these numbers. Quite frankly, you can't at this point. So what we are going to do, though, what we could do is find the probability that none of them are cutting edge, right, the top of the list, zero. So you, could, you can find that probability and then do what with it? Well, the whole table, because we're talking about seven computers for this example, this whole table would have to total one for the probabilities, right? These probabilities over here, even though we don't know them, we know they must sum to one because of that rule of probabilities that they must always add up to one for a probability model. All right, so let's look up at the top. What's the probability that none of them are cutting edge? All right, if none are cutting edge, that would mean what? That would mean that they're all ancient, right? All seven of them but we already found the probability that all seven are ancient. It's right up here that we found for part B, right? Now we get that by taking 0.89 to the seven power. So then all of these cells, you don't know what they are individually, but you know that they must be one minus that value, right? Because of the complement rule, right? It has to add up to one total. All right, so that gives us for this problem 0.557687. So 0.5577, if we round to 4. There we go. We got it. Now, would that be unusual? Heck no. Right, that's not lower than 5%. You need it to be smaller than 0.05 in order to be considered unusual. Right? So it would not be unusual. Check. All right. All set. I'll see you back up here next time for the next problem.